in a provocative thought experiment proposed by philosophy professor Anas Majder, a disturbing possibility is explored. What if women who have been declared brain dead, specifically brain stem death, could be used as surrogate mothers? Smajder suggests that this could be an alternative to traditional surrogacy, which she notes is often fraught with ethical and moral concerns. In her proposal, individuals or couples who cannot, or simply prefer not to carry a pregnancy themselves, could use the body of a brain-dead woman to gestate a child. She argues that this arrangement could be ethically acceptable, comparing it to organ donation. In both cases, consent would need to be given in advance. Just as someone might agree to donate their organs or body to science, a woman could consent to posthumous use of her body for gestation. Smajder acknowledges the practical difficulties, pointing out that there have been rare cases where brain-dead pregnant women have carried fetuses to term, though these women were already pregnant at the time of brain death. Such situations require careful management. Mechanical ventilation and other medical support must be maintained throughout the pregnancy. Critics argue that using medical resources in this way could be wasteful, especially when those same resources might be needed by patients with a chance of recovery. As expected, the idea has faced strong criticism from within the medical and bioethics communities. Some argue that this reduces women to mere vessels, stripping them of dignity even in death. Others express concern about the emotional toll on the donor's family, and whether it's appropriate to use a deceased person's body in this way. There are also scientific concerns. Critics have raised questions about the potential risks to the child, including genetic or developmental problems, due to the unusual conditions of such a pregnancy. American avant-garde composer Alvin Lussier died on December 1st, 2021. Four years later, he's still making music. In 2020, at 89 years old and living with Parkinson's disease, Alvin donated his blood to a project called Revivification, led by artist Sky Benary, Nathan Thompson, and Matt Gilnold, along with neuroscientist Stuart Hodgetts. The project aimed to extend Alvin's music beyond his biological life. Using his blood, scientists reprogrammed Alvin's white blood cells into stem cells. These were then turned into cerebral organoids. These are small, three-dimensional clusters of neurons that mimic the structure of a developing human brain. The organoids were placed in a specially designed life support system and connected to a multi-electrode array, which records the electrical signals they produce. These signals are transformed into sound using 20 large brass plates spread throughout the exhibition space. Behind each plate is a small hammer that strikes the metal when triggered by the organoid's activity. At the same time, microphones around the gallery pick up sounds from the room, like conversations and the echoes of the brass plates, and send them back to the organoids. This creates a continuous feedback loop between the environment and the living cells, allowing the organoids to interact with their environment in real time. Despite the fact that the brain organoids have no consciousness, this exhibition still raises important questions about authorship, creativity, and the nature of consciousness itself. In a 2025 paper published in Chemical Reviews, a group of scientists put forward an interesting proposition, one that blends biology with robotics. The authors not only argue the case, but provide a full blueprint for a new kind of machine, a biohybrid robot powered by living skeletal muscle. Their core argument is simple. Skeletal muscle, though biologically complex, offers far greater efficiency and adaptability than conventional electrical motors. While motors are easy to produce and control, they're bulky, rigid, and energy-hungry. Muscle, by contrast, is lightweight, energy-dense, and capable of fine coordinated movement when properly engineered. The proposed machine would be built around a soft, inorganic skeleton, but its actuation or its movement would come from lab-grown muscle tissue derived from established cell lines. These muscles would be stimulated, using precisely timed electrical pulses to trigger contraction, just as nerves do in the body. However, since the muscle is living tissue, it must be kept alive and functional. This introduces the need for homeostasis within the robot. To achieve this, the muscle tissue would require a continuous supply of oxygen, nutrients like glucose, and chemical balance to maintain pH temperature and hydration. The robot, as envisioned by the authors, includes all the systems needed to support this. The muscle compartments would be separated from electronic and structural parts by selective membranes, allowing fluids and gases to pass through without contaminating the rest of the machine. Internally, the robot would carry a glucose syrup reservoir for energy, a circulation system to deliver nutrients and remove waste, and a controlled gas exchange opening. This would function like a mouth or intake vent to bring in oxygen for aerobic metabolism. The proposed design takes the form of a quadrupedal, dog-like robot, a soft, four-legged creature with a fully internalized artificial physiology. Circulation is managed by a mechanical pump standing in for a heart, constantly moving nutrient-rich media through the muscle chambers. 
Waste metabolites like lactate and degraded proteins are filtered out by a disposal unit, integrated into the system. The skin is made from a silicone-based material, insulating the robot and helping maintain internal temperature, while also protecting the muscles from the external environment. The researchers suggest that such a machine, once fully developed, could be especially useful in applications or dexterity, soft body movement and energy efficiency are essential. These might include search and rescue missions in unstable environments, where a soft-bodied robot could maneuver through debris, or long-duration exploratory tasks, where glucose-based energy offers a better endurance-to-weight ratio than batteries. Despite this futuristic vision, the paper acknowledges serious technical challenges. One of the biggest is the risk of infection. Muscle tissue, like any living cell, is vulnerable to bacterial contamination outside of a sterile environment. Another major problem is tissue necrosis and thicker muscle bundles. Since oxygen and nutrients can only diffuse a limited distance, the core of large muscle structures risks dying if the circulation system cannot adequately penetrate the entire volume. Despite these and many more challenges, the paper puts forward a highly ambitious and original vision of what robots might become, something far removed from the synthetic machines we're used to. Hybrid flesh robots that blur the line between living creature and machine, able to adapt, move through difficult terrain, and perhaps even heal themselves.